The electricity consumption is one of the issues, but there are bigger issues. The fact that somebody with the more processing power can take over the minority uh, is a risky point. Welcome to a new episode of Blockchain Beyond Hype. Today, we're talking with Roberto Capodieci, the founder and CEO of Blockchain Zoo, about proof of work as a method to secure a blockchain. So, we are here today with Rob. We're excited to have you here to discuss your thoughts on proof of work as a method to secure a blockchain. So, you have spent all your life in IT and by running businesses. You were an early adopter and now you're dealing with a trendy technology, which is blockchain. However, there is no ICO on the list of your achievements. Could you explain to us why? Well, just because uh, being an early adopter, I started a project in 2014 for which a community of crypto enthusiasts contributed. It just there was not the name ICO at the time and okay. not the amount of money that uh, ICO usually collect now. Okay. I do find that uh, ICO per se is not really the most ethical way to get uh, a business uh, funded. In fact, uh, we have to say that uh, a very small percentage of ICO projects are actually a success. Uh, uh, big chunk fails and a lot are a scam. Uh, that's why I, I really love it, the word regulation worldwide that, that uh, protect consumer. It's also true that uh, many ICO are written by uh, speculators. They only pump and dump the value of a, a token, which is not really a healthy way to have a, a project uh, running. And uh, so for this reason, I stayed away, yet I managed to actually run uh, several projects on blockchain that uh, self-funded. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, that's something that is, that is good. Maybe in the next future, there will be a uh, coin offering on our side, who knows. So behind Blockchain Zoo is a group of consultants specialized in blockchain technology. What's the story about how eight co-founders came together in this organization? Well, that's a very interesting story. I arrived to a point where I decided to retire. Okay. I did well, and I didn't need to really work actively much anymore. And yet, it was a very hot moment, and I was a cover of requests of important jobs, and talking at several per day. And uh, that was uh, a pity to bounce these people back uh, without knowing to who I could refer these people because a lot of people entered this blockchain world with very beautiful words but zero technical capacity. It was for one amazing project that uh, I decided to put together a team of the best people I knew. And so then I reached to some uh, good friends that are also good in the blockchain uh, and this was uh, <clears throat> quite... Uh, two years and a half ago, two years, something like that. And this project uh, at the end didn't go ahead the way it was supposed to do, okay. but uh, the team was already um, sealed and uh, we were all aiming to do jobs. So all the other requests that I was receiving, I started accepting them and uh, together with this other co-founder, we put the base for Blockchain Zoom. Okay. So Bitcoin has popularized the blockchain tremendously, which is great because blockchain gained huge fame. But it also limited the view of the blockchain to be seen as torrent for money. So from the top of your head, what other use cases would you bring up speaking to businesses that want to look into blockchain adoption? Uh, that's a question that has a very complex answer. Okay. Uh, first of all, that's true. Uh, if uh, blockchain wasn't the solution for something like uh, electronic money, I usually do an example if blockchain was the solution for hairdressers. Mm -hmm. Probably it would never become so popular as it became. Mm -hmm. So the fact that money was on top of blockchain has been very useful to bring the attention of the masses uh, on this technology. It's also true that the technology can uh, facilitate many other uh, use cases. Uh, uh, I've been uh, a big expert of uh, the supply chain, uh, for example, on blockchain uh, for uh, trade, uh, for uh, uh, finance uh, documentation handling and not the actual money transfer aspect. But uh, the way that the blockchain are handled in per se need to be adapt to the use case that they have. Uh, the way that things are handled now is more adapt of the money aspect of it. Uh, a new technology needs to be implemented to secure blockchain for use case that are no financial uh, based. Okay. 
So a current requirement to confirm a transaction, or let's say change on the blockchain, is a consensus mechanism. Thanks to it, we can trust the blockchain and do not need any third parties for verification. How revolutionary is this distribution of trust to different industries? Well, it's, it's a, uh, an incredible next step uh, in the revolution of the information technology, mm -hmm. the fact that uh, we are getting rid of central parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, scary for some, exciting for others. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, political aspects behind this, besides the technological ones. But I do believe that uh, uh, moving the responsibility of the quality of the information from a central point uh, to the user themselves uh, is an essential aspect uh, to reach a very secure and solid uh, mechanism, method uh, to use uh, uh, the internet. So I do believe that uh, what the blockchain brought up as a kind of uh, distributed, decentralized, uh, uh, dispersed uh, system of uh, handling data is uh, the biggest new revolution the information technology is going to have. Is, and we just started, we are at the day zero of it. Okay. So what are the current consensus mechanisms used by such popular blockchains as Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash? Yeah, Bitcoin started with these uh, mechanics to secure the blockchain. Uh, there is a call proof of work which uh, determine pretty much uh, the guarantee of the quality of the data by letting only the most powerful uh, system uh, to uh, find uh, the correct solution to an algorithm uh, to chain one block with the other. I'm going to go a little bit more in detail. This answer is going to take a little bit more time, but it's essential to understand. There, are, there is a mathematical function uh, which can only be calculated in one direction. This is called hashing. So from a set of data, it produces a string. There is no way to calculate a group of data from the string. So it's unidirectional. And uh, uh, to find a string that starts with a set of zero, for example, is very complex. We need to add a little bit of uh, random data nonce to the set of data and do a lot of trial and error until we find the uh, uh, hash that starts with a set amount of zero. This is uh, the work, uh, the proof of work required to do to find the valid string uh, to lock the next block. This uh, Bitcoin, for example, as an algorithm uh, that changed the difficulty of this exercise by requesting more zeros at the, end, at the beginning of the strings. Uh, and this increased the difficulty so that the time that is required uh, to find the solution. And it, it keeps changing to keep the piece of uh, one new block every 10 minutes. What does it mean? That if a normal computer takes 10 minutes uh, and there is a trial and error, 1,000 trials to find it average, uh, mm -hmm. if I distribute this problem along two computers, only 500 trials per computer are necessary. Mm -hmm. And this will half the time. And because the first one to find the result wins new bitcoins, wins new money, people is going to distribute this problem in as many computers as possible mm -hmm. in order to win the race to find the solution. But the algorithm is going to always adjust the difficulty okay. to match up with as many computers are there. So the greed of wanting to win at is uh, make people run so many computers in parallel to mm -hmm. find the solution to win against the other, make it impossible for people with a computer at home, uh, a single computer, to compete with these people. So they need only to pull together in order to find a solution. And this reduces the capacity of winning this race to only a few people, a few companies, that mostly in China. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the majority of blockchains following Bitcoin are using proof of work as a consensus mechanism where handling requests for solving mathematical equations is the base of the verification process. So this doesn't sound very sustainable as powerful computers consume a lot of el electricity. So what are other less obvious downsides of proof of work? Well, the, the co electricity consumption is one of the aspects. Uh, and the fact that this exercise is quite useless uh, in terms of doesn't produce any interesting result. My first thought was why in place of finding a NASH they don't try to solve astrophysical uh, <laughs> problems or uh, medical problems or DNA deconstruction or something like this. At least we distribute uh, 
a work uh, that is useful, mm -hmm. uh, that produces a result. But besides this aspect, uh, which is a consideration that can be made, uh, uh, the electricity consumption is one of the issues, but there are bigger issues. The fact that somebody with the more processing power can take over the minority uh, is a risky point. Now, with Bitcoin, which is the one that produced the more wealth, so winning the race gives the most reward, mm -hmm. is very difficult to win this race because uh, there are many in the most uh, 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 power of processing that are working toward this. But for minor blockchain, the copy the system from, because the algorithm is identical, okay. the same hardware used to uh, work with Bitcoin can be used to work also with other blockchain. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? It means that in a moment that the price of Bitcoin is very low, like recently went down to 3,000 uh, some dollars, uh, the electricity can uh, constitute a cost uh, that doesn't make the game valid anymore. I mean, costing me more money than the money that I make. Mm -hmm. While if there is a minor blockchain, and this is a fact that happened with the uh, Ethereum Classic, which is a fork of the Ethereum, uh, they had uh, so little power uh, in processing the blockchain, uh, and the cost of this processing power to be rented online was very low, that somebody rented enough to have the majority of the processing power of Ethereum Classic, uh, and rewrote the blockchain faster than the rest, uh, becoming the leading blockchain, and in rewriting it, uh, it removed from some block uh, transfer that he did for almost a million dollar worth of Ethereum Classic. So he first paid and then he rewrote the blockchain, removing these payments. <laughs> and uh, this is a very, very dangerous thing because it means that uh, any person that can access enough processing power, which cost of renting it is uh, lower than the revenue or rewriting a blockchain, uh, has reason to do that. And uh, again, while Bitcoin is uh, the highest competition and is the most difficult, many minor blockchains that start using uh, proof of work as a security method are absolutely at risk of being taken over by somebody that did what they did in Ethereum Classic. Okay. So Scott Nadal and Sonny King created a proof of stake model in 2012. Apparently, the core motivation was that Bitcoin, with its proof-of-work model, generated an equivalent of $150,000 in daily electricity costs. In your opinion, is it a definite evolutionary stage for the blockchain, or are we still waiting for even better models? Well, I did participate to a project, uh, uh, the first actual blockchain that uh, been quite successful after uh, uh, Bitcoin, that it was based in proof-of-stake, which is Next, mm -hmm. or NXT. And uh, yet, uh, there are a lot of uh, complaints about how proof of stake uh, has been designed. Most of those blockchain distribute all the wealth at the beginning, mm -hmm. rather than Bitcoin generated as it goes, uh, so at the usage increase. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, the stake is what determines the power to protect the blockchain. The philosophy is that uh, in order to hack the blockchain, so to do what uh, somebody did with proof of work mm -hmm. to Ethereum Classic, in proof of stake, a user need to own the most of the economy of the system, which okay. makes useless to hack it because they're gonna damage themselves. Mm -hmm. So the security is based on an aspect of non-convenience of hack. This, this is the blockchain because it will damage the financial aspect. And this may work, uh, and it's working with some blockchain that run a proof of stake until the blockchain main function is having a value for the token, for the coin that you represent. In the moment that a blockchain is put in place, for example, to handle medical records, mm -hmm. a proof of stake to protect it as much as a proof of work will not be good because uh, there is not a financial aspect into the blockchain. Uh, and so the collection of coin in order to reach uh, the majority or, an actual, or uh, uh, the, the, the processing power, in case is a proof of work, uh, to, to win and rewrite, uh, may have a much less cost than the incentivization of uh, changing a vote, uh, modifying some records. So it's essential to have a system uh, the guarantee all the parties that is not connected to the financial aspect of a blockchain in the moment that we're using blockchain for non-financial uh, situations. So 
absolutely yes, there are new technologies that need to come up and there are already more than 40 kind of uh, proof of uh, to protect the blockchain. But unfortunately, most of those are based on the financial aspect, on the token, on the, on the coin. We in Blockchain Zoo are working to a new proof, it's called proof of participation, that will make uh, a blockchain secure just by the maintenance of the network, so by the participation of the nodes. With something we're gonna release in the next month, I shouldn't talk much about it, All right. <laughs> but uh, it's one step ahead, and I hope many more steps will be made after, in order to provide uh, absolute security on uh, a blockchain system that is not financial. Okay. So what benefits is proof of stake bringing compared to proof of work? Let's take perspectives separately. What is the benefit to society, and users, and businesses? Well, proof of stake for sure doesn't burn all the electricity that uh, mm -hmm. proof of work does. Uh, allow also uh, single parties to participate and have a chance to create uh, a new block uh, uh, without running huge computer, huge data center. In fact, uh, uh, with NXT, we put uh, nodes uh, in a small uh, Raspberry Pi or Arduino, the artist $20 computer uh, running with the solar panels, for example, and a small battery. So this is for sure an advantage. Smaller device uh, can run a uh, uh, system with proof of stake while a proof of work requires, in fact, uh, a lot of electricity. It's also a way to bring the access to more people, but uh, at the same time also proof of stake has its limit, also because it's uh, required to have a lot of stake in order to have an influence in the participation. Okay. Since such a powerful blockchain as Bitcoin is using proof of work, do you think the adoption of other consensus mechanisms will be slowed down? Ethereum is planning a change. That's a promising sign. What are your thoughts on the development of various models? Well, as I was saying, each uh, typology of a business model that a blockchain needs to support uh, may require a different uh, way to validate it and to secure it uh, in order to match with the business model. So obviously there will be many more uh, ways. The fact that the Bitcoin is using proof of work doesn't mean that tomorrow may not use a different kind of proof. Bitcoin is a brand. Bitcoin is something that people look at as Bitcoin. What technologies underneath to run it uh, may be uh, secondary issue, right? There is a really <clears throat> uh, a borderline with religion on some how people believe that without proof of work you cannot call it blockchain, uh, but there is uh, uh, all the actual objective reason to understand that the proof of work uh, failed and is not a secure, a secure system. Proof of stake has its own issues, uh, but more and uh, better system are coming uh, in the next uh, years. Yeah. So people have started creating mining pool where they pool their resources together to get a better chance of solving the cryptographic sum. Just four mining pools, the majority of them located in China, can control more than 50% of the Bitcoin mining power. Sounds like an unfair system, like you were saying, because the average person has no chance of ever winning the mining reward. How do you see that this aspect of centralization will be resolved? Probably will not. <laughs> the only way to solve it is a change in the algorithm for Bitcoin. As a, a hobby, a weekend hobby, with uh, uh, one and two other co-founders of Blockchain Zoo, we spent a lot of time to try to design a proof-of-work algorithm that uh, avoid pooling. So where each computer, each account has uh, one chance. Uh, to give you an analogy, let's pretend that that uh, is a lottery. Okay. okay, creating a block, somebody wins. So if I have 1,000 lottery ticket uh, and I buy 500, uh, obviously I have 50% of the chance to win, but the other 500 uh, distributed to other people still have one chance out of 1,000 uh, to win. With the uh, pooling to distribute uh, the uh, calculation uh, uh, problem, uh, it doesn't match the example of the lottery because as soon as other pull, the other have zero chances to win simply because it doesn't have, so it's like if they actually owning 50%, they are buying 99% of yeah. the lottery ticket. Yeah. So what we want to do is to bring a proof of work mechanics to one lottery ticket per computer. So if somebody has 100 computer, means he has 100 lottery tickets, so has more chance to win, but it doesn't remove the chance to win from For the others. The others yeah. okay. So electricity consumption is certainly a big issue for the proof of work model. 
Is there any chance to overcome it? Maybe mining farms powered by renewable energy? I think that's just old technology. If we think uh, how much uh, one of the first cars was burning gasoline to run uh, just a few kilometers and how this has been perfected with time uh, to have cars that burns very little, that's pretty much the same thing. Proof of work has been the first uh, invention, it's amazing, it's very romantic, it's beautiful <laughs> code. I think that uh, the Satoshi Nakamoto team didn't think about the possibility of people pulling. They were now uh, considering the fact that uh, in fact people can uh, have more computer to split the problem and in the case each person had a chance against everybody else but uh, as we go we need to abandon technology that uh, were no good but were necessary to do the first step into this decentralization system okay. security is also an issue for proof of work 51 percent attack is a real threat when having more than half of the mining power frauds can be performed and data in a block can be changed for personal gains is it the main failure point for proof of work? Yes, absolutely it is, uh, because electricity consumption for sure is a big aspect, but uh, is opinable. People can say, who cares? That's what gives the value to the Bitcoin itself because it's been spent money to make them, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can be okay or not. But uh, the fact that uh, proof of work can be actually gamed in order to rewrite the blockchain absolutely is a security issue. That's why it's a system that needs to be abandoned, in my opinion. Well, this has been very interesting. Thank you for telling us about why proof of work is the wrong method to secure blockchain. We do like to ask all of our guests, how do you envision blockchain changing the world? For sure, blockchain, as I was saying, is the next big revolution to or is the starting point to the centralized system, to get rid of central parties, to get rid of uh, uh, centralized control. So that's for sure a big step into uh, the future of information technology. And um, how do you think the market for blockchain-based solutions will evolve? Yes, as everything is moving toward the centralized aspect, uh, most of the applications we use online today are moving toward the centralized system. So blockchain or the future of what the centralized technology will be beside blockchain are for sure the hot aspect of uh, IT in this moment. And uh, as things are going very well in blockchain zoo, we can well say that uh, is a real good market to be in at the moment. Yeah. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you again for talking with us about the way that proof of work works, or rather how it doesn't work. Thank you for watching, guys. We at Blockchains, we're excited to bring you our new guest on our next episode.